Representative Zerwas uh, would like to move his bill, which is House File 1582. Uh, Representative Zerwas, to your bill. Mr. Chair and members, House File 1582 is the most exciting bill to ever come through Health and Human Services reform. And it's exciting to be back here in Health and Human Services uh, Finance. It is the body piercing bill back for yet another fun hearing. Mr. Chair, there is a DE1 amendment, but I'm tempted not to offer it because it would, it would put the bill in the, in the form, it would have the bill in the form of when we had an HHS reform and the conversation we got to enjoy then. But in the interest of time, I'll offer the DE1 amendment. Representative Zerwas offers the DE1 amendment. The DE1 amendment is before us. Discussion to the DE1 amendment. Representative Zerwas, could you just uh, maybe just describe a little bit of the changes uh, that we're looking at between the DE1 and the underlying bill? Um, Mr. Chair, committee, I have some testifiers here who can help walk through the changes. All right, uh, Mr. Goodnow, welcome to the committee. Please introduce yourself for the record and proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, my name is Kevin Goodnow. I'm here on behalf of Almost Famous Body Piercing. And the DE1 amendment uh, would put the bill in the same format as was carried in the House Omnibus Bill last year, with one exception. It changes the notification requirements from 90 days to 60 days and notifying uh, a licensee of a, a renewal. Um, it does change from the first engrossment of House Fi File 1582 by removing the prohibited piercing section, uh, and that is the major substantial change uh, with this amendment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would defer to Representative Zerwaz if, if there's any questions about what each one of those piercings means. All right, that's uh, good advice, Mr. Goodnow, and uh, we can direct that from committee questions to Representative Zerwaz. Representative Liebling. Offer. <laughs> Thank you, Ready. Mr. Chair. I was just noticing that Mr. Goodnow seemed to be blushing before we even started. <laughs> so, um, but I don't think, you know, we, we talked about this before. I think we all remember it. But I am, um, did I just understand you to say, though, that the part about the prohibited piercings is being removed, right? And I have to say, I, I'm concerned about that. You know, this is one of the rare licensing bills that I actually support because, you know, I'm very skeptical about a lot of licensing that goes on around here and over, you know, really over regulation of professions. But this is one that I think it's really a serious health issue. And I think those prohibited piercings are a really serious health issue. And so, Representative Zerwas, maybe you could explain to us, I, I, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to make light of it at all, but why are you removing that and therefore essentially allowing those piercings to be done in the state? You know, I'd really like to know that. Representative Zerwas. Mr. Chair, members, Representative Liebling, um, this was the move that was made at the end of last session um, in order to be a part of the omnibus bills we moved forward um, in consultation with the Department of Health. This was one of their wish lists. Um, it, it wasn't something they were married to at the end of the day. Um, the, big, the big change, the substantive change um, going forward in this bill mm -hmm. is looking at first, rather than um, number of hours spent um, um, at a place of employment while waiting to get licensed, um, we're now doing a number of procedures or, or piercings done. That, that's the substantive training change that the department um, is comfortable with moving forward. Um, if you have a floor amendment later on, I mean, I, it's, you know, I don't know if Kevin has a. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, and additionally, I believe the testimony last year when this provision was pulled out at that time uh, there were some questions asked about how many different, how many complaints the Department of Health has had on these prohibited piercings, and the, I believe the answer was none at that point. I don't know if that maybe has changed since then. It also adds to the fiscal note, and uh, this fund is um, being challenged right now with uh, 
I mean, they, they have some issues with regard to the cost of, of enforcing the, the current um, overall body art laws. And so we wanted to try to minimize the fiscal impact on the Department of Health at this point with this legislation. Mr. Chair. Representative Zer Ross. And Mr. Goodell brings up a good point. Um, we've gone um, several rounds with the department. Um, we had a zero fiscal note at the end of session last year. Then as session kicked up this year, we had a, we had a small fiscal note on this bill. We're back now with a revised fiscal note uh, for zero dollars again. And, and as Mr. Goodenow stated, this fund is, uh, is already facing some financial hardships. And so any requirement or attempt to, to monitor a uh, prohibited piercings list and, and follow up on investigation stuff, um, the fund doesn't have the money to support that. Um, and, and we don't have the money uh, in this fiscal note to support that. Representative Liebling. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, Representative Zerwas, I mean, I, I'm fine with the other change you described. I think that makes total sense. But, you know, when you look at what these prohibited piercings are, I mean, eyelid piercing, you know, one mistake. Somebody getting an injury from this is a whole heck of a lot more than $18,000. Now, maybe it doesn't come out of the same pocket, but good grief. I just, I just, I can't support removing this from from this bill i just think that you know um and whether they can even enforce it isn't really the issue people need to know that this is stuff is you know that that we don't think that these things that are particularly dangerous need to be done i mean this is cosmetic so i you know i just i just don't think this is you know, I, I hear the invitation to do an, a floor amendment. You know, I don't know whether I'll take that invitation or not. But, um, you know, I think this is just um, pretty serious stuff. And we shouldn't be, we, you know, it's great to, great to have the training and all of that. And it, this is our opportunity. We ought to be prohibiting these things. Mr. Chairman. Representative Zerwas. And, and the challenge, again, Representative Leland, I understand your concern. I understand where you're coming from. The challenge is the minute we, we do that, whether it's in this committee or, or as a floor amendment, that's gonna put this bill out of balance. It's gonna, it's gonna cost money that the fund doesn't, the special revenue fund doesn't have. Um, and we're gonna get significant pushback at that point from the department. Other discussions to the DEE amendment? Representative Loeffler. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and um, Representative Zerwas, you seem to have also lightened up on some of the, the other requirements. And I'm looking at um, the supervision division, uh, definitions starting um, on the amendment at 1.15. And that you have now direct supervision is a different definition than in the original bill, which said that you had to be within the line of sight of the temporary technician who's performing the body art procedure. Now they just have to be within five feet. And some of these places can be just little, you know, little partitions. I mean, you could be within five feet and be on the other side of a wall and not be able to observe whether or not the, the temporary licensee is doing it right and catching it before they do something wrong. <clears throat> And so I'm wondering why you're taking out uh, the requirement that they be in the line of sight um, of the temporary technician. Mr. Goodno. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, the, um, the line of sight issue uh, was something that we discussed with the Department of Health. And we actually feel that the, the five feet is actually a more stringent requirement than the line of sight. Because I can, I can see the chairman right now, and that's more than five feet away. And so in a larger, larger facility, you could be in the line of sight, but still not be close enough to see what's actually happening. And, and I think the agreement was that five feet would put you in proximity where you could see what's actually happening. Representative Lockler. Mr. Chair and Mr. Goodno, um, actually the original language was within feet, a five feet and within the line of sight. <clears throat> and so to me, you are actually taking away that requirement that they be close and observing at the time. And, you know, when you're making a permanent change in someone's body, I and you're a new newbie, you should have someone watching you very closely to make sure that you're not doing it inappropriately. Um, and I don't, I don't know why we would weaken this, particularly when 
um, you're permitting some pretty risky procedures now by, by eliminating the, the piercing prohibitions on eyelids and other things. I wouldn't. So, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Goodenow. Representative um, Leffler, I, I don't believe um, that we have any concerns with it, putting the old language back in with regard to that. I'm not sure if in health, do you have any concerns? No, in the health, the Department of Health is not in there. They don't have a concern about it. I do just want to state that um, the bill was broader, much broader to begin with, and we were trying to um, apparently do a lot of things that I don't think we had the ability to do in a, in a short period of time without a broader support within the broader body piercing community. Um, what we really want to do is, is would, we would really like on behalf of almost any smooth the bill forward so we can deal with these, the certainty around a lot of these things, minors receiving piercings and the line of sight issue that, that you talked about. Um, so we can get that basis done. Um, but we certainly think there's a lot of other things that could be done from a regulatory perspective out there in the future. But at this point, we'd like to move this bill forward so we can at least take this first step. And from, on behalf of my client, we're um, committed to working on these issues to make sure that this is an industry that's very safe and we're willing to work with anybody that's interested in dealing with us on that. Representative Loeffler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would, <coughs> just, since we're not taking out the prohibitions, I really do feel like it has to be a legitimate training and supervision situation. And um, I know we don't usually do oral amendments, but I would feel more comfortable if we were to insert and in the line of sight on line 1.8 as it was in the original bill. Ms. Aves, could you see if we mm -hmm. incorporate that? Mr. Chair and members, the um, oral amendment would be on line 1.8 after feet insert and the line of sight. So Representative Loeffler moves a correction to line 1.8 of the DE1 amendment after the word feet insert and the line of sight. So line 1.8 would read establishment and is within five feet and the line of sight of temporary licensee who is performing. Is that correct? Representative Loeffler? Yes. All those in favor of incorporation of the Loeffler Amendment, please say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, no. The Loeffler temporary or the Loeffler correction is made. Uh, Representative Zerwas. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, that's the D1 um, as it stands at this point. All right. All those in favor of adoption of the DE1 Amendment, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The DE, the DE1 is uh, adopted and incorporated into 1582. Discussion to the 1582 as amended. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to take a second to just clarify something for the record as I was discussing the prohibited piercings that are now out of the bill. I want to just say I don't have any, um, I, I think people should have the right to modify their bodies in the way they want, and that's not my concern here. I just want to say for the record that my concern is about who would be qualified to do those procedures, just in case anybody's listening and wants to understand what the objection is. And so really it is that under the bill as it now stands, these um, body artists are now qualified to do any of these procedures, pierce an eyelid and, and the other things that are in the bill. So I just wanted to clarify that that's my objection. Yeah, and Mr. Chair. Yes. And members, currently, any body artist that puts their time in in a, in a piercing shop, not necessarily done enough procedures, but just put the hours in, would be qualified to do those exact same uh, piercings. So, and I understand the concern, and I think if you remember way back to our first iteration, um, 
Mr. Goodnow and, and, and for his clients, the, the first attempt at this had several levels of license, licensure uh, and what piercings would go with what level of licensure and, and the department and, and other stakeholders kind of pushed back on that and said that was, you know, really an administrative challenge um, to try to work that in, in the real world. And so I think I understand some of your concerns, um, but I think the bill, as it moves forward, as it focuses now on procedures done, not just hours clocked, um, we think that's going to be a very big move forward um, for, for safety of patrons. Other discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, Representative Zerwas renews his motion that House File 1582 be recommended to be re-referred to be referred to the General Register <coughs> as amended. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Motion prevails. Thank you, Representative Zerwas. Thank you.